Okay guys, coil winding effort uh, number two. Um, so I got some more wire. Um, this is 0.1 mil, which I guess would be 30, close to something like 38 gauge American. This is 0.2, which I guess would be more like 32 gauge. Um, and so the guitar pickup wires that I had were like 42 and 43 and uh, well the 43 is so light I can't even see it I, I couldn't thread it through the bloody uh, winder <laughs> because I couldn't see the end of the wire um, but and I have some 20 gauges like mid 20s and they're way way too thick so I'm hoping that uh, one of these guys um, I'll start out with the with the point one uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop a couple of meters of this off and see if I can measure the resistance of it. Uh, I don't have anything for measuring resistances highly accurately. Um, so we'll just try the old conventional uh, agilent meter and uh, see how we get on. So then hopefully I'll have something to feed into the software that will give me a closer uh, result than the, uh, the radically way off one I had the last time around. Okay guys, here's version 2, um, better this time, um, <coughs> I might even run with this, because this measures 83 ohms, and about 9 millihenries. The original one I measured was 73 ohms and 6.5 millihenries. And since this is just really a choke to make sure there's really no AC going back uh, getting mixed in with the B plus here I think I might just run with this um, now I have to go and get I think some aspirin tablets because trying to get the enamel off this bloody wire is a pain and well it's problematic <laughs> let me put it that way um, so I need to obviously trim these wires really short and solder them to the eyelets and everything and so to do that, I can't afford to be just like messing around with this stuff and, and sandpaper and emery paper and, and whatever, trying to scrape the enamel off. So uh, I've tried various other things like acetone, they have no effect whatsoever. Um, so yeah, if I can find a way of safely removing the enamel uh, of this so I can put solder on the end, um, I think we may go with this one um, as coil number one. Um, and uh, then get on to the other two and see how they go so yeah um, learning as we go um, the coil is not entirely parallel there's more wire at this end the top end here than there is at the bottom and what I found is um, in the software you specify the distance between the two ends here the, in other words the length of the winding uh, from end to end here um, but if you get the nozzle slightly out of alignment then what happens is okay the wire never quite comes back to one end and then when you get up to the other end it goes a little bit further so it stays there a little bit too long and so you end up with a slightly more wire at one end than at the other but I think for now for my first uh, attempt we'll give it a shot and see how the radio performs later and uh, if it's problematic I've actually seen a number of sets where this is not even included they don't even use it um, so uh, I'm not only worried about this one the next one will be an entirely different situation so I think at this stage we'll say one step forward well there we go guys it may not be much of a coil but it's my coil and it's the first one so uh, I'll leave that and we'll get on to uh, the more complex one and so there it is all fitted into the uh, into the set um, so all I gotta do is get on and do uh, the second coil to go in here so that I can finish off the components around there and that'll be pretty much the wiring of the set done. Um, 
I started having a go at the second coil, which is the more complicated one, and not a lot of luck so far. So, um, I'm still missing some pieces of the puzzle about all this coil winding because uh, the uh, diameter here is about the same as the other one. It's the same wire as the other one. And so the resistance of this coil should be, uh, I can't remember exactly, but less than half the uh, resistance of the other one. So I use the same wire. And so I have the number of uh, turns or whatever. Uh, but we're nowhere close on this one. So, uh, uh, and the impedance is miles off. So, since these are going to be part of tank circuits, I think I'm going to have to do better. So, um, yeah, more to learn on co coil winding, that's for sure. But, um, no rush. We'll get there when we get there. Um, so I'm assuming that as well as just the, um, the length of wire involved, there's basically the width of the coil, the number of turns, all sorts of things will affect its ultimate impedance. Although I would have thought the resistance wouldn't have changed. That would be purely a factor of the length of wire. I would have thought. Anyway, we keep at it. So uh, more to come once I've got this one sorted out.